Okay, we're gonna take a brief Turkey Day hiatus and be right back at you on December 4th after the... <laughs> right. And welcome to Overtime, brought to you by Kingscast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Kordak. And I'm Chris Kalaszewski. And the Kings are on the road in Canada right now. Things are definitely not going well. Yeah, that's right. This is episode 80, and we're going to be talking about the Buffalo game. We're going to talk about the Boston game. We're going to talk about the Ottawa game. Throw out our thanks for the holiday season, and uh, take your questions on Facebook and Twitter. So here we go. Buckle up. Let's go. So, Keith, last time our episode was called The Sky is Falling. Yes. And it was sort of a tongue-in-cheek title about how we've lost two games in a row after being sort of spoiled uh, for a while there with our, our quick start. But now I feel like the sky really is falling. We've lost four out of five. Uh, this team is not playing well. Uh, what happened in that uh, Buffalo game? Uh, nothing that was really good, that's for sure. Uh, I, I think one of the biggest concerns for me is that last year we didn't have Willie Mitchell or Alexei Ponikarovsky. Who we did have was Randy Jones. Mm -hmm. And and Froloff. Well, and Froloff, <laughs> right. Uh, this year, it seems like you remove those two from the lineup, in Ponikrovsky and Mitchell, and things have really started to go downhill. I don't know why. I mean, uh, the Kings defense, it, without Willie Mitchell, has been playing absolutely terrible in front of the goaltender. In fact, you know, most of our losses, Chris, can't be faulted by soft goals. They can be faulted by soft defense. Yeah, obviously, uh, Bernier was in that game, and I know we've been sort of hard on him. He is 2-4 and four now, which is not great. Uh, giving up a lot of goals, but uh, it's the defense at this point. I mean, we talked about Matt Green last episode, but that's carried over into this into this next show. I mean, the, the guy is not playing well. He's he's playing uh, flat-footed. He's playing slow, and, and he's getting worked out there. I mean, this is the Matt Green that we expect to be pushing bodies all over the ice, and he was when he first came back, but he's definitely digressed, and that's a problem. Yeah, the other concern to me is the is blown leads, which is a theme over the past like six or seven games. We start, we're playing fairly well, we have a one to two goal lead, and we end up blowing it. It's happened in virtually every game since. Is it a lack of confidence? I mean, it seems like the locker room is very tight, but something is missing, and it's got to be something beyond Willie Mitchell, who is definitely missed, but... Definitely missed, but we expect those guys to step up, and, and uh, Jake Muzzin, obviously, has, has not played that well, and that's reflected in the way that he just got sent down, traded for Mr. Alec Martinez. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I think it's a good trade because uh, it's just not working out. Uh, and also, in that, in that Buffalo game, they're 0 for 5 in the power play. So, yeah, ouch. Ter terrible. Going into Boston, uh, a little bit better of a performance. However, we were up for most of the game. Boston kept chipping away, came back, took us to a shootout in which uh, Michael Hansings won in the sixth round, which was uh, good to see, but still very concerning game. Yeah, uh, nothing against Jonathan Quick, though, that game. I thought the d defense let oh, those no. goals in. He played fantastic, definitely in the shootout. Uh, you know, stopped all six shots. And luckily, Hanzu scored uh, to get that win because uh, you hate to blow a lead like that. How devastating is that to, to, get, uh, to get an L after a game like that? So luckily, they won that one, but still. Uh... Yeah, you would think that they could keep the momentum going like they f sort of figured it out. But last night in Ottawa was a train wreck. Again, Kings are ahead, uh, playing somewhat more consistent, and then just let it all go. Jason Spetz had a beautiful goal, but the story of the night was the last three seconds, Chris. Yeah, the last three seconds, uh, you know, Kings fans were rejoicing everywhere when, you know, the last three seconds when Smith uh, looked like it was a goal for sure to me. But, uh, of course, conveniently, there was no ice level camera. And you got to sort of question that. I mean, this is, this is a crucial game. These points are, are so important. Uh, you know, the Kings should have at least walked away with one point last night. Uh, they were in that game. Uh, they only gave up like 19 shots or something. So goal looks good to me obviously i'm a kings fan but uh definitely devastating to walk away with with a loss and you know one for two on the on the road trip and what's funny is that i expected us to beat buffalo we did not i expected us to sort of lose against boston and win against ottawa and so far it's been the opposite let's just hope that uh tomorrow night in montreal which is a huge game against one of the east top team playing really well they are gotta come away with a w or at least some points yeah i know a lot of people i know this ryan smith goal it, it was bad and it was a blown call definitely i think the refs miscalled it on the ice that said it's not a conspiracy against the kings or <laughs> four canadian teams no. refs make mistakes it is what it is although we are having those referees in montreal next night uh, tomorrow night which kind of sucks but you know kings fans it is what it is the point is we're one and two in this road trip you need to be 500 on the road and we're facing this Unbelievable Canadians team. See what happens. Yep. So uh, the issue, obviously, that we mentioned already is the power play. And 
just not up to up to standard right now. I think they're two for twenty right now, and this is when we have to score. And this Kings team is just loaded with talent. Uh, why can't they score on the power play? Why is it so inconsistent? I think Drew Doughty is maybe a little bit behind, although he is a plus eight right now, and mm -hmm. you know coming off concussion, maybe he wasn't a hundred percent. Uh, that's tough, but the story really is getting pucks to the net. I mean, they have a great net presence in Michael Hanzus and, and uh, Ryan Smith and sometimes even Dustin Brown, but the pucks just aren't getting there. I mean, they're high and wide or they're being blocked by defensemen. It's just not clicking the way it was last year. Yeah, and there's only so much we can count on Dowdy and, uh, and Johnson to be out there every time. They can't have all the pressure on them as a defenseman. And they, obviously, a big reason why we're calling up Alec Martinez and hope to get some more uh, scoring from the blue line. Because, yeah, the puck's just not getting into the net when, you know, I think we started the season off saying, hey, we have one of the best blue lines in the league. And now it's like, yikes, we have some major holes. Yeah, let's talk about Alec Martinez for a second. Martinez, uh, called up from the Manchester Monarchs, uh, is leading the team in scoring. Yeah. Uh, you know, he made the team last year coming out of camp. Mm, it was sort of shaky, but... Um, you know, look, uh, hopefully he plays better than Jake Muzzin. Yeah, it's always scary when a defenseman is leading the team in scoring. I, I always kind of worries me a little bit, especially in yeah. Manchester where they got some talent down there. Uh, but hopefully it makes a difference on the Kings. Need it to happen. All right, Kings fans, so it is the holiday season. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and it's our time to give thanks for what we're happy about, being a Kings fan. I'm thankful for Jarrett Stoll. Here's a guy that we wanted to trade in the offseason. He's not a second-line center. The only thing he's good for is winning face-offs. He's been amazing this year. Goals really paired up well with Ryan Smith and Justin Williams. Thankful for you, Stoli. No, I'm thankful for Justin Williams. Now, talk about a guy that pretty much everyone, on the, uh, all fans in the organization, uh, we totally wrote this guy off, never thought he would be able to score like he has, and he has. He's got nine goals. He's got 21 points. He's an absolute stud out there, and he's literally carrying this team on offense a lot of the time. So, love you, bro. On a more serious note, Kings fans, I'm thankful for the Ice Girls calendar. Uh, that was a home freaking run. Um, I will confess that that video is played continuously on my television in the living room. Uh, awesome job, Kings. Kings fans, I am thankful for Bailey, our beloved mascot. This guy is incredible. You know, I know when he first came out uh, several years ago, everyone thought it was sort of cheesy. You know, he's a lion sort of parading out there. The guy is hilarious. We're so lucky to have this, this guy. He, he speaks with his hands like no one else. Uh, everyone loves him. Love you, Bailey. I'm thankful for a second line. A second line that we have this year that's actually producing and also named the geezer line. And lastly, I am thankful for having a first line that appears to still be working without a bona fide left winger. Now, we've been able to hold our own right now, uh, inserting the four or five players who have tried to fill that role. So I'm thankful so far. Not going to last, but thankful that uh, we've been able to score. The King Sands, what are you thankful for? Oh, that's right, it's us. Uh, all right, so Kings fans, we're going to take your questions now from Facebook and Twitter. Wanted to know what was on your mind. You kindly wrote us. Uh, Chris Dodeau, our friend ah, from the Hockey Zen, uh, wants to know if the Kings will beat Montreal tomorrow night. Uh, Chris, I know you love your Jaeger, uh, and hopefully you are drinking it tomorrow night when the Kings win, but uh, it's going to be a tough game. I don't see the Kings winning. Sorry. Uh, Matt Piccarillo on Facebook said, do you think the Kings should try to trade for ja uh, Zach Parise when he comes back from injury? Uh, absolutely. Our friend Meg Gerald, Megums, uh, when is our defense going to wake up and stop depending on quick to fix their mistakes? Uh, great question. Uh, I'm going to have to say we're going to have to have Matt Green step up and Alec Martinez is going to have to make a big difference. Or Willie Mitchell should just come back. That'd be nice too. Yeah. Uh, Ian Pay on Facebook, what are the chances of the Kings trading for Jerome McGinley? Zero. Zero. Right. This from Crown Royal LA on Twitter. Uh, who are the Kings this year really? Uh, they've been top of the division, top of the West, and, and the division, but are they really any of those? That's a good question. That's a great question. I think once they fill in that uh, left wing spot with whoever it is, uh, it'll work out, and also uh, fill these holes on defense. I, don't, I do not pick the Kings to win the West to, or to even win the division. I picked them uh, because they're missing that top left wing to finish seventh or eighth in the conference. Now, I don't think it's going to be that bad because obviously Willie Mitchell and Alexei Ponikarovsky bring something significant to the team. But I don't think we're a Stanley Cup contender yet by any stretch. We're going to take a brief Turkey Day hiatus and be right back at you on December 4th against the Detroit Red Wings. So have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kalziewski. And thank you for watching Overtime. Bye, Kings Cat.
Thank you.